Hello everyone, it's great to see you again. Welcome to Chapter 5, Section 2 of the online video course Chinese Traditional Culture and Spiritual Healing. My name is James, a teacher at Guangdong University of Foreign Studies. Professor, days ago, the CEO of Easy Entertainment, Mrs. Yang Tianzhen, became a hot topic, as she made a point that why can't we sacrifice health for work, which triggered a heated discussion among netizens. What do you think of it? Thirty-five-year-old Yang has a very successful career. In an interview with women aged 30 plus, she mentioned that her mother told her not to sacrifice health for work. She retorted with some annoyance, why can't I sacrifice health for work? Is health that important? This rhetorical question made her most searched. Some netizens believed Yang probably has never suffered from illness. The fact is quite the contrary. She has endured diabetes for many years and is suffering from its complications. To lower blood sugar, she also underwent gastric surgery. Some other netizens said that Yang Tianjin is truly naive. No, judging from Yang's attitude, towards female aesthetics and marriage in the interview, she is a powerful woman with insights into life. According to her, she chose to sacrifice health for work because all her sense of accomplishment comes from work. After the remarks sparked heated discussion, she responded on Weibo as follows. I choose I sacrifice, I endure. This is the loneliness and paranoia flowing in my blood. I don't require anyone else to do the same, nor do I suggest anyone imitating me. This is a quite good crisis management. Regarding this event, netizens started a heated debate on the order of importance of health and work. Although the majority of them scolded her, Yang has proposed a really good question. Why can't we sacrifice health for work? Why not? It seems that sacrificing health for work was morally praiseworthy in a certain historical period. As said by Yang, any life is an independent individual. Of course, I respect people's independent choice too. However, to prevent some people, especially young people, from regretting their decision after losing health, I want to show another value system, that is, the thought system of Zhuangzi, for your reference. We deal with various kinds of values throughout our life, such as value of morality, financial gain, power, fame, emotion, knowledge, career, and life. These values exist in our consciousness in a certain sequence. Some regard their career as the greatest achievement in life, such as Yang. But for Zhuangzi, life and happiness are what he values most, while other values are less important external things. In Zhuangzi's view, to pursue career success at the expense of health or even life is like to shoot an ordinary sparrow with the most precious jewel, which is to attend to trifles to the neglect of essentials. Because the tool he uses, life, 
is unique, irreversible, and too precious. As Zhang Zi sees it, Yang loses more than gain by sacrificing health for work. Life is of absolute priority to Zhang Zi, who opposes any behavior that places other things above life and regards happiness as the most important basis for judging whether a behavior is inappropriate or not. Therefore, work should serve life and improve happiness in life, not the other way around. In short, life is the ultimate goal not to be sacrificed casually. Some may ask, during the COVID-19 pandemic, many medical staff bravely fought the disease and even devoted their life. Would Zhang Zi object to it too? I think Zhang Zi, who has great compassion for the world, will not object even if he is grieved because those medical staff have protected the lives of more people. Others may say, since death befalls all men alike, why not pursue the strength, density, and width of life instead of its length? That's why Yang asked, if I can only live until 30, but lead a wonderful life every day, that would be good as well. Why should I live so long? Generally speaking, human death can be divided into three types. The first is inevitable natural death that everyone must face. The second is avoidable death, that is, the end of life in advance due to one's own choice, such as drug use, drunk driving, suicide, and overwork. The third type is death caused by accidental disasters due to force majeure, such as natural disasters and killings in war. As mentioned in the last lesson, Zhang Zi was optimistic towards inevitable natural death and advocated doing everything possible to prevent avoidable death. Now, the average life expectancy of Chinese people exceeds 70 years. Should Yang has died at 30, this is obviously a premature death caused by not cherishing life, which is opposed by Zhang Zi. Life is a ship sailing to the unknown. It carries gifts from heaven. We should escort our life as much as possible, personally measure the entire journey of life, and appreciate different views at different ages. Should you let your life stop at 30, you will miss so many wonderful moments and insights that will happen at 40, 50, and 60. Life means of unique experience in different periods, like there are flowers in spring, cold breeze in summer, moon in autumn, and snow in winter. Hardships, losses, and aging are compulsory courses in life from which we may yield beautiful flowers. We must allow the existence of strong or weak, rich or plain, wide or narrow moments to live an ample and complete life. Zhang Zi's attitude towards life can be summarized as do not hurt life, live happily, do not seek longevity, and die peacefully. Not hurting life, 
means putting life in the most important position and not hurting your body for work or other things. Living happily means receiving the meaning and value of life, including study, work, marriage and parenting, and enjoy the process of life. Not seeking longevity is to face inevitable natural death philosophically. Dying peacefully means to live out a natural life. Not hurting life is the prerequisite of living happily. It is because only by putting happiness as an absolute priority instead of taking life as a tool to obtain other things can we truly enjoy life and the satisfaction brought by work instead of endure physical and mental sufferings for a utilitarian purpose such as career success. Living happily is the guarantee of not seeking longevity. Only when we truly receive the happiness and meaning of life can we face death philosophically and feel no regrets before death. Because it's worth it. Dying peacefully is the destination of living happily. If we truly protect and enjoy life, unless there is an accidental disaster caused by force majeure, we can, of course, live out a natural life, instead of leave this world early due to physical and mental illnesses that we shouldn't need to suffer from, such as depression and death from overwork. The above is Zhangzi's attitude towards life. I hope it can help my young friends deal with the relationship between life and work. We've now reached the end of section 2 of chapter 5. Before we finish, I have some questions for you to think about. You can see them on the screen now. Please pause the video to think about them and continue when ready. 1. What is your viewpoint regarding the relationship between work and health? Do you agree more with Yang Tianzhen or with her mother? 2. Morally, should we respect a person's right to make his or her own decisions, even if it is likely that he or she will regret it in the future? 3. Do you agree with Zhuang Zi that protecting and preserving life is the ultimate goal? Can you think of situations in which something else is more important than life? Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.